Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, welcome to another video of C++ for beginners. In this video I wanted to explain the concept of ternary operator, also known as conditional operator, and also some people call it shorter version of if-else statement. It is an important concept that you are definitely going to come across in your programming career and you should understand it. And I'm going to explain this concept through building fun and simple program that is going to be a guessing game. So let's explain the rules of this game. We need to have two users and our first user, which I'm going to call host user, has to enter a number. After that, we have to delete that number from our console so that our second user cannot see it. And then after that, our second user, which I'm going to call guest user, has to enter his guess so that he can guess what number our first user has entered. So this way we can really make a fun program and learn an important concept at the same time. And at the end of this video, I'm going to give you an idea or multiple ideas how you can really upgrade this program on your own. So make sure to watch the entire video. Now that we have explained the rules of this game, let's start building our program. And the first thing that we need to do is create two variables. Since we said that our user is going to be guessing numbers, those two variables are going to be definitely a number type. And let's say that that type is going to be integer, so integer numbers. And we need two variables. The first one is going to hold our first user number, so our host user number. And then our second variable is going to hold the number that our guest user enters. So let's call those two host user number like this. And then the second one let's call guest user number like this. Okay. And now after we have created these two variables, the next thing that we need to do is let's write out a message to our host user so that he knows that he should enter a number. So let's say C out and let's just say host like this so that our host user really knows that he should enter a number. And I'm going to accept that number in my console using the C in command and I'm going to store that number inside our host user number variable. So with this line here, we have entered our host user number. And what we have said at the beginning of this video is that after our host user enters the number, we really need to delete that number from our console so that our second user is not able to see it. And the command that I'm going to use for that is going to be this command here. So I'm going to say system, and then I'm going to say CLS, which is, which is really going to clear our console, so clear our screen. And now if I run my program, let's see how far we have made, made this program. Here we have this line, this seventh line, which says host user, and it expects our host user to enter a number. So I'm going to say, for example, seven. And then after I press enter, this number here really is deleted. So our console has been cleared. And now after this, we need to ask our guest user to guess the number that our host user has entered. So I'm going to stop the program. And next we need to write out a message to our guest user. So I'm going to say guest like this. And after that, we need to accept what our guest user enters inside our guest user variable. So I'm going to copy this line here like this. And instead of accepting that value inside host user number, I'm just going to change this to guest user number. And after this part here, we really have both accepted our host user number and our guest user number. And now we need to compare these two and see whether our guest user has guessed correctly our host user's number. So how we can do that, if you are familiar with if else statements, and I'm going to link that video here. And if you are familiar with them, that is really one way to solve this problem. So you can solve this problem with if else statements and I'm going to do that. And then we are going to really convert that if else statement inside a, into a ternary operator. So how we can solve this with if else statements? Well, it is quite simple solution. So we have to say if 
And then inside these parentheses, I'm going to really compare these two numbers. So host user number and guest user number. So I'm going to say host user number is equal to guest user number, like this. And then if this here results as true, so if these two is if these two numbers are the same, we can write out a message to our user, and that message is going to be, let's say, correct. Like this. So our user has guessed correctly. But in a situation where this here results as false, we can use our else statement. And in this else situation, let's write out a different message to our user. So let's say see out, and then inside these, these quotation marks, let's say failed, like this. So that in the case where these two are the same number, we can write out to our user that he has guessed correctly. And then in a situation where these two are not the same, we can write out to our user that he has failed in guessing. So if I run my program now, you see that it expects our host user to enter a number. And I'm going in this situation to take the role of both host and guest user. So I'm going to enter seven, for example, and then you see that that seven number has been deleted from our console because of this command here. And now our program expects our guest user to enter his number. And I even forgot what number I entered. So let's say that our host user has entered, for example, 11. And you see that our program says you have failed, so you haven't guessed correctly. And one more time, let's enter for our host user number five, for example, and then let's say that our guest user also says number five, and our program says you have guessed correctly. So this is one potential solution for this problem, but I wanted to show you how you can solve this problem using ternary operator. And now I'm going to comment this code here like this. So this is a comment for multiple lines of code. And let's really translate this part of code here into a ternary operator like this. Okay. So how does the ternary operator work? Well, it is the only operator that takes three operands or works on three operands. And the first operand is going to be a condition. So I'm going to copy this condition here, which is, is our host user number equal to our guest user number? So that is going to be the first operand. And after that first operand, we need to put this question mark. And then after this question mark, we have the following behavior. If this expression here, so if this condition here is true, we are going to execute one line of code, or actually one part of code, and that is going to be this line here. But in the situation where this here results as false, we are going to execute whatever we put after this column sign. So that is going to be our C out failed like this. And this is really the syntax for our ternary operator. And as you can see, it really is a shorter form of if else statement. So this line of code really means, please check this condition here. And if this condition here results as true, execute this part of code here. But if this code here results as false, please execute whatever I put after my column sign. So that is going to be our C out failed. And now if I run the program, it asks again for our host user to enter the number. Let's enter number nine, for example. And then our guest user has to guess the number. So let's enter, for example, number three. And you can see that our program says to our guest user that he has failed in guessing. So there are a couple of ways in which you can really upgrade this program, and I'm going to give you a few ideas. And the first one is, for example, you don't have to use int type here. So you can use different data type. Data type. You can guess characters or you can guess even strings if you know how to. And if some of you want to play with that and try that on their own and you get it right, make sure to paste that code in the comments down below and I'm going to check it. And if you get it right, I'm going to pin that comment up so that everyone else can see it. 
So that would be one way of upgrading this program. Another way to upgrade this program is to make it easier to your guest user. And how do I mean easier? Well, you can really limit your host user to enter a number that is going to be in a certain interval. For example, you can say to your host user that he can enter only a number that is going to be between, let's say, 1 and 15 or 50. It depends on how difficult you want to make it to your guest user. And that would be one way also of upgrading this program. And another and the best way of upgrading this program is going to be when we learn loops. And when we do that, I'm going to link the video here. And how you can upgrade this program using loops? Well, you can give your guest user multiple attempts. So you can say, for example, let my guest user guess three times or five times before I say game over, you have failed. Okay. So I hope that you have liked this video and if you did, make sure to subscribe to my channel, share it with your friends and with other people that would like to learn programming and I'm going to see you in my next video. Bye.